This is podcast number 53. Again, all this week we're talking about emergent properties and how complex uh, issues of the biology of humans uh, can be explained um, by its parts, but not any one of its parts. So the parts have to come together to get this emergent property. In this case, uh, we're talking about how it is that a human fetus is not uh, rejected by the mother. So you intuitively know that there has to be a good match between a donor and a recipient of an organ, saying if someone's getting a kidney, You've heard uh, in the news or in some Facebook group or something like that about somebody's looking for a good match um, uh, between the two species, sorry, between the two uh, individuals. So how is it that uh, mothers don't um, reject their fetus because at least half of the fetus DNA is not their DNA? Um, so how does that work? And this is... Um, Took a long time to figure it out and have a good idea how it works. It's a little bit complicated, um, but uh, you can handle it because you're almost at the end of principles one. So these sorts of experiments started with uh, doctors treating um, burn patients in uh, World War II uh, and noticed that if a burn patient got a skin graft from one part of a body to the another part of their body. They were just grafting tissue from themselves. That's called an autograph, and those skin grafts healed well. But if they got a skin graft from somebody else, um, that's called an allograph. Uh, those two words sound from, uh, similar, but allo means different. Um, auto means same, uh, and that skin is rejected. So um, if we look at uh, these sorts of experiments and how long it takes to reject, uh, so this is um, days after transplantation, and in a first uh, set of a low dose, a small patch of skin, it takes a, a number of days before uh, the patch is rejected. Um, if the patch is bigger, it uh, it rejects faster. You see, going down to a low number faster. Uh, second graft of a small patch. So if you transfer an allograft um, in a small uh, patch, you get this sort of curve. But then the same size patch, again, it reacts faster. And uh, even if it's done at the same site. Uh, so there does seem to be a, a phenomenon of the immune system learning about uh, this allograft. And the second time it sees it, uh, it has... Um, a faster rejection rate due to uh, a memory in the immune system. So the knowing that embryos are not rejected, one of the uh, hypotheses to test was, well, maybe mothers just have a reduced immunity while they're pregnant, and therefore um, that's why they don't reject their embryos. Um, and so uh, experiments were done with rabbits where well, they did allografts so two rabbits, rabbit A, rabbit B tra uh, transfer a small spot of skin from B to A and it's rejected Okay. then uh, you have a third rabbit, rabbit C B and C um, create embryos those embryos are then transferred to A and, uh, and A incubates those embryos as a surrogate mother. Uh, and then, then take uh, an allograft again from B to A. So these embryos uh, are not even half 
the genetic material of this surrogate mother. They don't have anything in common with that surrogate mother other than their rabbit embryos because they came from a totally different individual. But does if one of those individuals is B, does that um, say anything about uh, how fast that'll be rejected? So if this rabbit, while it was pregnant, um, had reduced immunity, then if you give it an allograft, it should accept that allograft. But it doesn't. It rejects that allograft. So then you can reject the hypothesis that while uh, the mammal is pregnant, it has reduced immunity. It does not appear to have reduced immunity because it rejects um, an allograft just like it did if it wasn't pregnant. Okay? And it also um, carried the baby's term uh, and so it didn't interfere with its pregnancy. Uh, ten uh, times, uh, ten uh, babies were produced, uh, or ten different litters uh, were produced, sorry, ten different litters of rabbits were produced, and they did the second allograft to the uh, pregnant mother at different times when either when they were um, uh, the embryos were transferred or in the middle of her pregnancy and either way uh, most of the time they had a healthy pregnancy. Um, it's a little bit technically challenging to uh, use uh, to implant these embryos so it doesn't always work and that's why these are not 100% um, numbers uh, but it, it's possible anyway for uh, the mother to be pregnant, for her to be able to successfully gestate these uh, baby rabbits and deliver them and still have a healthy immune response rejecting an allograft. Okay, so then if we say, okay, it's not that mothers have reduced immune system when they're pregnant, so maybe they're seeing their own uh, babies that they're um, gestating, maybe they see them as self-tissue, sort of like an autograph, um, not a allograph. Um, okay, graft, sorry. Uh, all right, so two new rabbits and then the same A mother. Um, uh, the uh, rabbit E is going to supply the skin and rabbit D is going to receive the skin um, and also rabbit A will re receive the skin from E. Then um, those first two grafts are transplanted uh, onto A and then also skin from the babies are um, uh, transplanted back onto A. So if the baby skin, the mother's babies, okay, uh, if sh and these are babies produced from other parents, just like in the first experiment, if those baby skin transferred back to the mother, she does reject the um, allograft from her own babies and she does it faster than if she got skin from uh, an unrelated rabbit. Uh, if the rabbit uh, from E is translated, transmitted to, transplanted to the mother A, it takes about as long as if skin from E is translated onto um, rabbit D. So the fact that the mother is pregnant doesn't seem to matter, again, as a control. We saw this in the previous experiment. It's not that the mother has a reduced immune system. Uh, in fact, uh, from her own babies, if she gets skin from her own babies, that's rejected even faster. Okay, And this is probably because her immune system has learned something about uh, these uh, babies. Okay. 
So what is what are the molecules that are involved in here? There is a molecule on all of your cells that is presented on the outside of the cell called the major histocompatibility complex. So M is major, H is histocompatibility, and, and C is compatibility. So it got its name from these sorts of experiments. Is the tissue compatible or not? And this is the, the molecule that determined is the tissue compatible or not. So on the outside of your cells, you have this thing sticking out of the cell. It's going to be drawn like this cartoon, but it actually looks more like that. Okay. And it has a um, binding site on it that is shown empty here, but it's not really empty in real life. Uh, what it does is it takes little pieces of proteins from inside the cell and presents them on the outside of the cell, uh, shown as this little rod here, okay? Uh, like that. And here's a 3D version of it where this peptide, which is just a small piece of protein, the protein came from inside the cell, now it's presented on the outside of the cell. Okay, and that is how your immune system recognizes if something is self or non-self. Is it looks at this protein and says, "Did that come from me, or did that come from something else?" So, for example, if this cell was invaded by a virus, that virus has protein components to it. They would get chewed up into bits and then presented on the outside of the cell. And if your immune system recognizes that that is not part of a cell that came from me, that came from outside, it'll destroy that cell. It'll know that it's a virus and it'll destroy that cell. Okay. So um, when they're trying to figure this out in terms of is it... Uh, what causes a rejection of an allograft? Is it because the MHC1 protein is different? Okay, the actual gene uh, that makes this protein, uh, and you have many, many of them, thousands of them, um, uh, different types in, in your cells. Is it that is what is being recognized, or is it the peptide that is bound in that pocket? Is that is what is being recognized? So they made some fancy mice. And first they took these fancy mice and they gave them an autograph. So they took a patch of skin from one part of the mouse, transferred to another part of the mouse, and it was never rejected. Okay, That's just sort of a control experiment just to make sure they know what's going on. And then they did an experiment where the only difference between these two mice was it makes a difference type of MHC1. Uh, uh, MHC1 is a type of MHC. And uh, it was rejected very fast. So their entire genome is the same except for this one gene that makes MHC1, and that was enough for the rejection. Okay, so that would be in that would indicate that it's because of MHC1. But then they did the same sort of experiment uh, where it's the same type of MHC1 in both of these mice, so they're identical, but now they put a different peptide in the MHC1, okay? A different thing bound right there, okay? So this part of the molecule, red and blue, the same, they just put a different peptide on it. And in that case, it's also rejected, but it takes longer to be rejected, okay? So if you have the wrong kind of MHC, you're going to get rejected right away, but if you have the wrong kind of peptide, you will get eventually rejected. Okay. Okay. Uh, in these sorts of experiments, they took um, uh, all the possible combinations. So, uh, is between the donor and the recipient is the MHC uh, the same or not? Are the peptides the same or not? Um, and what makes a difference? So if the MHC is not the same, 
uh, then you get rejected fast. If the uh, if the peptides are not the same, you get rejected slow. Okay. So uh, the MHC is on the outside of all cells, uh, all mammal cells, and lots of non-mammal cells too. Uh, immune systems are kind of complicated, so I can't make real generalizations for everything, but for mammals, we're talking about um, MHC's uh, uh, proteins on the outside of all cells. And it's sort of an advertisement saying, you know, I went searching around inside this cell and I found uh, a piece of protein and I'm going to put this protein, piece of protein on the outside of the cell and I'm going to ask my immune system, hey, is this part of me or is this a virus uh, that I don't know about? So the T cells come along and they interact, uh, they have a T cell receptor that interacts with the MHC molecule and it can feel that peptide. It also feels the edge of the MHC molecule. So if it's the wrong type of MHC molecule, the T cell has the power to kill this cell. If the peptide that is in there is the wrong peptide, like if it came from a virus, which is not self, it has the power to kill that cell. Okay, here's just an interaction showing you the T cell receptor and the peptide and the MHC. So it's it's the, they're really closely um, uh, touching each other to feel uh, what is this peptide. Okay, um, if they did an experiment. Uh, using MHC molecules with peptides. Uh, if uh, the peptide did not come from self, the T cell receptor can recognize that and kill the cell. Okay, But if it recognizes it, yep, that, that's a piece of the cell. Uh, I recognize that. That's, that's you. Uh, then the cell will survive. Okay? Um, if it's uh, either the peptide or the MHC molecule is did not come from uh, self, then the cell is killed. Well, you could think, well, a cell could survive just by getting rid of MHC. So the T cell is looking for MHC. If it doesn't find T MHC, um, then maybe that would survive. But then there's another part of your immune system called natural killer cells, uh, NK cells. Okay, uh, and these natural killer cells recognize any cell that does not have MHC on it, and as in as is in their name, they'll kill them. So if you don't have MHC on the outside at all, natural killer cells will kill you. Okay, uh, so MHC one binding to a natural killer cell uh, will say, "Okay, you're okay." Natural killer cell won't. Kill them. Natural killer cell is not going to look at the peptide that's bound. That's by that's done by the T cells. It's just looking, say, do you have an MHC one or not? Okay. And then the T cell is looking for, do you have the right kind of MHC one? And is the peptide that you have bound there, did it come from you or did it come from some kind of invader like a virus? And if the answer is the virus, uh, it will kill the cell. And if the cell is trying to get away with something by just getting rid of MHC1, the natural killer cells will kill that cell. Okay, getting back to the question of uh, babies and moms and their uh, and moms and their fetus. In the uh, um, gestating mom, there is the fetal side of the tissue. Okay, in these sorts of colors, okay, in the blue range. And then there's the mom side of the tissue in the brownish range here. And you can see that they are in close interaction with each other. Specifically, these uh, cells called cytotrophoblasts and interacting with the maternal fetal interface um, in the 
um, placenta. Okay. When they were looking at the, those cells in this area, they looked at uh, uh, the kinds of MHC molecules they discovered in that area. And they discovered a new kind of MHC molecule called MHC IG. IG stands for immunoglobulin. Immunoglobulin is another name for antibody. And these type of MHC molecules act like antibodies because they are uh, breaking off from the cell and they can circulate. Okay, so they're not attached to a cell. They can break off of a cell and then they can circulate. Okay, and they, but they act like MHC otherwise in that they can bind up a peptide and they can interact with T cells. Okay, these uh, MHC IG molecules can bind to T cells and natural killer cells and convince those cells that this is self and don't kill me. Okay? Uh, and so in this area, the fetus is producing MHC IG, this molecule that is secreted, and it's going to suppress the uh, maternal, the mom's, immune response that would normally say, hey, this is not me. Um, I should attack this tissue. Instead, the MHC uh, binds to the T cell receptor, binds to the natural killer cells, and says, hey, we're good. This is part of you. It's not a virus. You don't have to reject me. Okay? Uh, if you look for MHC IG molecules, these MHC molecules that can break off from a cell and float around in circulation, uh, when they are labeled green, fluorescent, they tend to surround embryos. Um, and, uh, and so they are in high concentration around embryos. And the embryo is protected from the maternal immune system. So then to test the idea that these MHC IG antibodies were protecting the embryo, what they did was collect a lot of these cytotrophoblasts. These are uh, cells that are making MHC uh, IG. These guys right here, okay? And then they wanted to know if we got rid of different things uh, that uh, uh, could be protecting the embryo, uh, when we get rid of uh, the MHC IG, does that mean that now the natural killer cells can go after them? Okay, so uh, in that, so first they tried it just with a generic antibody. So this is an antibody that doesn't bind to any kind of human tissue, um, and they just put a regular old antibody in there. And it doesn't make any difference in terms of that regular old antibody um, uh, doesn't affect uh, whether or not the natural killer cells go after the, um, the uh, embryo or not. If they add an MHC1 antibody, so not MHC IG, but regular old MHC1, the one that is still attached to the cell and presenting the peptides and all that sort of stuff, it also doesn't make any difference um, in protecting the cell. But when they add antibodies against MHC IG, now the natural killer cells can kill those cells. So MHC IG is faking out the natural killer cells. If you get rid of anti uh, uh, if you get rid of MHC IG by putting in antibodies against MHC IG, pulling them out of the experiment, now the natural killer cells can go in and kill those cells. This is lysis. This is popping those cells. So if there's no MHC IG, those cells get killed. Okay, but if there's no anti-MHC one, doesn't matter. The cells still survive, and if there's no just generic antibody doesn't matter, the cells still survive. Only when you get rid of MHC IG does the embryo now, um, or the cytotrophoblast, which is in the 
vicinity of the embryo, uh, now uh, that now they won't survive anymore, won't be protected from natural killer cells. So this is pretty strong evidence that this molecule, MHCIG, uh, is the thing that is protecting the embryo. Uh, 